Hey everybody, good morning. This is John Klubnik, and um, we're going to get started in just a minute. Um, would you do me a favor, just hit the chat or the, um, the chat box there if you'd like, and just tell me you can hear me and see my screen, please. You should see the, the blue um, title page, and hopefully you can hear me. So just confirm that I'm working if you could. Audio. All right, can you all hear me? I don't see anybody on. Hey, Adam, how are you today? All right, I'm still hoping for some confirmation that you guys can hear me. Oh, thank you. Thank you, David. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're going to start. Oh, we're time to start right now. So let me let me just um, introduce myself and tell you that I, I'm recording this and hopefully it provides some use for you guys and um, I'm actually doing three of these um, and you know we're, we're partnered up with the folks at Swift page and they've um, pushed this out to, to their Facebook group and some of their list and so um, we've got folks that have worked with me in the past and we've got folks that are um, maybe just new to this and, and just want to say welcome my name is John Klubnik and um, I'm an act certified consultant um, and also a hosting provider for ACT and an ACT trainer. And um, we have um, worked with ACT for almost 18 years. Previously, I worked in the space industry um, as an engineer at NASA and have been doing this ever since and um, really enjoy it. So we are going to go probably 30, 45 minutes or so, and, um, and then I'll open up for questions. Today's session is not so much a technical session about ACT, but a session of, on, on maybe talking about how to get um, an organization to, to better use a tool like ACT. And so with that, and hopefully you can see the screen here, here's what we've learned is a lot of times, if you see the little video, um, getting to use a company-wide um, CRM system is a lot like herding cats. And um, what I mean by this is that people are busy, people have different priorities. I have seen um, CEOs tell everybody, here's a great system, but use it if you feel like it, and then wonder why nobody used it. Um, so things that, you know, th this is really designed for, for organizations to try to um, help you get kind of firing on all cylinders and um, using this tool in a way that is going to um, be an advantage to you so that you take ACT way beyond the Rolodex level. So you see my second bullet item here. Um, the Rolodex level is what I refer to when, when folks are just kind of putting in names, address, phone number, city, state, zip, and that's about it. And, um, you know, at that point, it's it's just really overpriced and not the right tool if that's all you're going to do because there's so many other ways for um, for just that stuff. Basic demographics, you can look it up in the phone book, you can Google it, and there's no point. What the purpose of, of a tool like ACT is going to be or a CRM is data way beyond that, where you can really dive into your um, customers and and both at the pre-sales and and um, for existing clients and and really kind of see what's going on. Um, another symptom of this is you'll see um, reports kind of look inconsistent, and um, 
you know, one one you run Monday morning and and gosh, it looks like everybody's been busy, but there's no data there. Well, that's an example of an inconsistent company strategy um, revolving around the database. So as we try to move you from left to right to, to a more advanced use, that's what you got. Now, um, I told you I worked at the Space Center for a while, so so I thought this was kind of cute. But um, a lot of times, you know, what's the obvious that's, that's in front of us that we miss? We miss things because we don't have all the information in front of us. We've missed key indicators of our customer relationships. Uh, maybe we've lost a client because somebody wasn't happy or I was talking to the wrong person. Or maybe you left money on the table because um, they, they might have been willing to pay more or there was more value to uncover and you just didn't do that. All of these things are symptoms of an inconsistent strategy that um, manifest themselves in, just like this picture, um, missing the obvious. So we're focused on something else instead of looking at the whole picture. Sometimes we are um, us-centric rather than customer-centric. We're looking at things that um, it, at the business or the relationship from 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 how I would um, do it, and and we do that. That's that's really common, but um, it, it lends itself to an ineffective um, use of CRM. And you know what we, you know, I, I sell ACT, and and Adam's on our call, and he sells. We sell a lot of ACT, but what we hate is. But it's really sad when somebody uses it for a year and they go, hey, I just didn't get anything out of this. I, I haven't gotten any return on my investment, and um, it's too expensive, and so we're going to stop using it. And so what do they do? They go to nothing, or they, they play, you know, they just go hop, hop, hop to different CRMs, and they really never solve the problem because, here's my next one, uh, CRM is more of a strategy than a technology. Think about that for a second. It's not about so much the features in a CRM, although ACT has great features. There's other products with great features too. Getting an organization to um, implement this and see value out of this involves a strategy which, which is, is more of a process and, a, and an internal soft skill than it is a technology. Technology is important and, and you want it to work, but so many times I've seen folks that it, it fail because they haven't been using it or because they didn't use it consistently um, or they didn't, you know, just a variety of reasons. So um, my goal in this, the other thing in terms of, of implementing a CRM strategy is to move you from primitive to sophisticated. I want it to help take you from um, that Rolodex at the very beginning to uh, more advanced to where this is actually a tool that does you some good. And um, I'll give you a couple examples real quick. I had a guy in mortgage, and in his database he had a field called target refinance rate. And so everybody he did a business deal with, he would ask them or he would decide what rate it made sense for them to refinance their business or their, their loan. Well, there was a time when, when rates dropped for a couple of days, and he, he noticed this, and he said, I'm going to, so he basically looked up everybody whose target refinance rate was um, above what the current market rate was. And he did a, a lookup and then a mail merge to his database. My friend Dan made $50,000 in one afternoon gross profit because he had target refinance rate in his database and he knew <laughs> to send that out. So that's an example as we move left to right from a Rolodex to something that's sophisticated that can turn your business around. So I told you what, what makes people like me and Dan sad and, and disappointed when somebody isn't able to use ACT or isn't able to use their CRM and they, they quit and they go back to nothing or they go back to something else. Um, what I love to see and what, what I bring value to as a consultant is the ability to help you wrap your business around a CRM so that you can do things like double your business because you've asked the right questions and kept the right data in the database. And so that's what's really important with this. Um, if you've noticed, um, nobody likes to lose a customer. I don't like to lose it. That's what I was talking about. You don't like to do it, but there's, there's a variety of reasons why people stop being customers. They move to another location, they go out of business, or they, they go to a competing company. This is about 34%, but the rest of them leave because they, they feel ignored when interacting with 
with their with other companies and um, so we try to develop a relationship where we're involved with you and I encourage you to try to develop a relationship and so part of that is is a system for how do I um, know who to call and when to call and when to spend my time as, as a salesperson all you have to sell or to offer is your time and so if, if you are spending your time with folks that that aren't gonna you know, aren't ready or don't want to do business with you aren't the right fit then then you're ineffective as a salesperson um, we've got an expression in Texas called big hat no cattle and so what that means is the guy that calls and talks up a storm but he doesn't have any business going on he's he's and, and he's just gonna waste your time well you know if you can identify that by asking appropriate questions then you can greatly minimize the time you have to spend with somebody like that and focus on those those larger prospects larger accounts those that have more um, potential value those where you can add more value to them and so what we always look for is is we look for folks to work with where I can add a lot of value to them a lot of value to their business um, I had a guy one time you know a CEO in my training class um, announced everybody here's a great CRM use it if you feel like it and what do you think everybody did they got busy they didn't want to be looked over they didn't want to learn you know learning is you know think about going to the gym and getting in shape it takes work and so given the option to to do nothing a lot of people go that way so um, that's that's what I want to encourage you with today and so how can this become your most valuable asset so you think about what as, a, as an organization, as a company, what's my vo most valuable asset? It could be my my, my best salesperson, our location, my pr my best product. But effective CRM implementation has been known to provide a revenue increase of about 41% per salesperson. And I've had people, you know, a lot more than that. My most valuable asset as a business is not my office, not my computers, not even my people. Believe it or not, it's my database because people leave I've got one company we worked with and you go into their conference room and in the corner is a pile of laptops you know what's that for those laptops were there because those were the laptops of all the departed salespeople and so if anybody wanted to know what happened in the territory they would go fire on that lap fire up that laptop and try to look through their outlook and see what the guy was doing and so it was it was very difficult to continue the relationship that one salesperson stopped when he left or was promoted and and continue that with the next person from a recruiting standpoint um, you know if you're gonna hire somebody what what an amazing carrot to hold in front of them and say I've got a developed territory that um, with notes and and key contacts and and opportunities that are in progress and I'm going to give you this previous guy's act database and you can just go keep going what he's done because he's he's done that consistently and that is a huge part of um, a, a CRM strategy we make it um, where, where the whole organization does as much as possible in act now I don't want them to spend all their day so so you, you're gonna hear people salespeople especially go well, I don't have time to do it my goal for a salesperson is about two minutes per call update the information record their history or their notes and update their opportunity and list what's next about two minutes or less per call and doing so is going to get that stuff out of their head into the system where anybody can help with it or where your reports mean something and so on so real quick what is CRM CRM is a is a relationship tool it's a technology for managing your customer your company's relationships and interactions with customers and potential customers so it, it's a place to, to keep track of that now the other thing I see people do is they carry around notebooks I have a notebook notebooks are good but the problem with a notebook is you can only browse through sequentially so I go through a notebook about every six months so what happened if the guy you know called me a year ago I gotta go find a year ago's notebooks to look for my notes and it, it, it's very hard to, to find things it's very hard to search for things and honestly my short-term memory goes back about a week or so so um, a system like this when I put the appropriate information in and I spend about two minutes per call putting the data into act I can go back years 
I can go back years and I can find out what you what was important to you, why you left, why you did business, why you didn't do business, what we did with you, um, how big you are. You know, a big a big thing for a software company is selling more seats. So I want to know how many people do you have that use the system. It's not that I won't help a guy with just one with one person in the office, but I'm sure going to perk up if you say 50. <laughs> Maybe you're the same way. So um, this gives me a place to to to, um, to capture all that stuff so that I can um, spend time with that and, and and work that. So we go back to why do CRMs fail? Why do CRM projects fail? Why do people go back to Excel and Outlook and other tools. Here's some some main reasons. Number one is no objectives. They buy it and they they don't think about it. And you know, I I started using this mainly because I was asked to manage a group of about five guys, and um, we didn't have any way to to talk to them. I was going to school, and so I hired. I was actually um, going to seminary school, and so I had some some future pastors that would work for me on Mondays, and they'd make cold calls, and then the rest of the week I would. Um, follow up on the leads that they had. And so we needed a system to um, to track that. And you know, Excel just isn't built for teams. Outlook's not built for teams. And so we started using ACT. And you know, we we had huge it was it was a great thing. Uh, number two, no strategy. And so we're talking about that, but if you just give people the tool and say, hey, go use it like you feel like it, um, nobody's gonna use it the same. And so your data is going to become just a hodgepodge of different tidbits of things. I've got a guy that was, you know, didn't know you could add fields to act, and so he was writing his favorite, this favorite sport. He would ask what favorite sports team they have, and he put it in the phone number field. And then we have people that put in notes, and some people put in histories. Well, if you put in notes and not histories, when you run a history report, your histories are blank. It looks like you didn't do anything. So it's real important to have people use this consistently. Um, scope creep. I think I think it's just important to to Start with what you can uh, adjust to, and and do that, and and go. And the next one is is poor and no user adoption. It, it, having a saying around your office, if it's not an act, if it's not in CRM, it didn't happen, is really going to be powerful there. Um, you you cannot, as a business, um, have data all over the place just because people didn't want to use it. it it's it's a, it's a key thing as a business owner and, and a champion of this to, to encourage and require some level of minimum participation. And so that's why I use the two minute rule. I, I really seek to keep it to within two minutes. I want to make sure that the technology is up and available. But then I want everything to be an act. I'm not going to run reports off the old way. I want to run reports from act. And so if they put it into act and they put it in the right place, I can run the reports and everything's there. And I don't need to go and look at Excel spreadsheets or call somebody at home and ask them what they did. If it's not an act, it didn't happen. And then the last one that, that a lot of times we see room for improvement on is just business process design. And that's you know how you run your business and being consistent in that. And the, the better you can systematize your processes, um, and not to overkill it, but the better you're going to do. It always amazes me that I can go to McDonald's or some summer camps and they're run by a bunch of 16 and 17 year olds because they've been given great processes to do. And so I can go, you know, whether you like fast food or not, the thing I'll give McDonald's is that I can go to any restaurant in the world and I get a consistent experience. And I know what the shake's gonna taste like, and I know what their fries are gonna taste like. And, and there's a lot of value in being consistent with your clients. All right, so here's how CRM can add value to your organization. Um, biggest thing I think is team communication. So if somebody's out, if somebody's left the company, if somebody's on the phone, then then anybody else can go and pick up that that relationship where they left off. And um, you know, if somebody takes the time to call me, I don't want to have to send them to voicemail or call them back tomorrow. I'd like anybody in the office to be able to help them up to a point that's possible. Um, data analytics. Um, the, the cool thing about this is I can look back years and years and years and see everything that's happened and, and the more you go in business and the more you build that database the more valuable it's going to become um, you can do your, your feedback is instant you can see what what's happening instantly follow-up tracking opportunity tracking and and with customization I can wrap 
this tool around our businesses and it really can become powerful. All right, so how do we get started? So, so one of the things, before you even choose a CRM, and a lot of you guys, you may be using ACT, you may be using something else, but, um, and, and I've got another webinar we're gonna do, um, I guess in a couple of months, about, about kind of crawl and walk and run. So you certainly can buy it and, and get to use it as you do it. And I can usually tell folks I can train you in about 30 minutes on very basics of ACT. So that means what do I, where do I put my names and numbers? What do I do with my notes and histories? And what do I do with opportunities? And so we can, we can be very, very simple to start with, but then we can grow in sophistication as you grow around your processes. So it's important to, to have your business processes and any systems that deal with customers kind of consistently defined. Um, we want to think about short-term goals and long-term goals. Um, you know, so I, I had a, um, a financial planning group that I worked with at one time and and they wanted us to to put our retirement money there okay so that's the short-term goal the short-term goal was to to get me to move my finances or my retirement nest egg into their umbrella but the long-term goal is that they they took care of they need to take care of me they need to you know recognize if my situation has changed and so this first group I worked with didn't so I, I sent them all my money in 2005 but since then I had gotten married we had kids we had a hurricane we had a recession and all of these things changed my long-term financial objectives and so in order to add value they, they should have been calling and saying you know how are we going to adjust your goals based upon what's changed with you and so it's really important to think about both short and long term in fact we have strategies built into our act designs that, that help you um, think about both of them so short term is great because it's it's an instant hit you get the money in but long term they, they say it's so much easier to keep a customer than to have to lose a customer and get a, a new one and so a long-term strategy there is, is going to be really important I tell people this is not a silver bullet or a, or a magic pill okay you can't just like starting a gym membership is not going to guarantee you to be buff and lean it's going to take work CRM implementation and seeing that change in your business is going to take some effort and and being consistent but it absolutely pays off and for me it's been a lot easier than the gym so uh, it's not that bad um, remember to keep your customers perspective at the heart of your strategy not just your own so put the hat of your clients on think about how they're responding to things here's a key example I've seen and we, we've been guilty of this too we do a project and we check it off as done, but the customer doesn't get notified that it's been done. And the customer needs to register that, hey, I got it. I, I see what you did. I acknowledge the work was done. And, and so many companies get stuck into that trap. They do the work. Maybe they finish the widget, but it really can't be marked as done until you deliver that widget. The customer uses it, and they acknowledge this is what I thought I was getting, and I'm good. And then after that, we go to another stage. But, um, you know, just having that perspective and, and that strategy, um, you can actually record those things inside of ACT and that is different stages. And so finishing the widget is one stage, delivering it is another stage, and, and validating or verifying that, that it was delivered acceptably is another stage. And we might track all of those things in ACT so we can see where different items in our projects are kept. Um, Finally, be willing to continually listen and to measure and change. Um, it's going to be kind of a work in process, but you know, as my other webinar, I'll show you. It's crawl, walk, and run. It really can be um, a, a good tool for that. Okay, so company wide. Um, remember, as I said this earlier, from the perspective of key persons in each department. So, as you're getting started, what we do in our strategy sessions, we have somebody from each of these different departments. And you may have more, you may have less. Um, it's not a training session. I'm not coming in to, to, to show you how to use ACT here. But we want to understand how your business processes work, how we can create value for you with CRM. It does me no good to create value for management, and I don't create value for the salespeople. It does me no good if, I, if my marketing folks aren't in the system or the folks in production. So we want to look at the perspective of each of these key people 
and address or adjust the system and customize it in that way. So that helps us define these, these KPIs or key performance indicators. And these are basically just things that we want to track about our business. We want to define, measure, record, and report against these things. And a lot of times the first thing we're asked when we come into a company is, is well, hey, um, I want to run a report. Where's my report? The reports are going to be empty until you fill out the right data, and the data can't be filled out until you put the right fields in. And fields can't be defined until we define what business process we're trying to model. And so we have to talk about the modeling of the business process first, and then we go on to add, add in the right fields, then we go on to recording the data, then we go on to be able to report it. So reporting a lot of times, although it's the first thing we'd like to see, it's the last thing we're able to develop because it doesn't mean anything until those other things are there. So in terms of, of what do we capture, here's a kind of an analogy that, that I've used. It's called fill in my bucket. And you think about this, there's two ways I can use ACT. Number one, I can journal. And so if I go into an organization or make a phone call, I can get a phone call from Mary. And Mary says, we'd like to talk. We've got a deal for you next, you know, next spring. It's about $50,000. We need a pr proposal. And let's have lunch next Thursday to talk about it. What you don't want to do is we don't want to journal this stuff inside of a note or a history. We want to be able to enter things into fields wherever appropriate. So I might want to, you know, and, and what I tell people is when you're on a phone call with somebody, when you're on site with somebody, you've got one chance to stick your head in that organization and poke around and take a look and see what's going on. Maybe, maybe there's not an opportunity right now. Maybe there's one later in months, you know, next year or something. So poke your head around. Um, and also, we want to gather key information for contacting them. I want to get their phone number, their mobile number, their email address. How'd you hear about us? How many people w would work with us? You know, but then think beyond that. Um, I'd like to capture in what industry you're in, how you heard about us, um, what need are you trying to fill? You know, what, whatever those things are, um, this is what we're going to have the salespeople put in during that two minutes. And so I don't want to overwhelm. I usually say, you know, three to seven fields for the most part for, for, for general sales. Now, I've got folks in mortgage that have 500 different fields, but they fill those out over the course of the relationship. And they have things like um, survey requested, survey received, uh, ref um, appraisal requested, re appraisal received. And so they track all of these different things. And ACT is awesome for that. But in terms of, of asking a salesperson to, to take an initial sales call and ask too many questions. There's typically kind of what I, what I call a ticking time bomb between the customer losing interest and, and, and you know, you want to provide value on that phone call. So I don't want to ask 50 questions about them. I try to ask as few as I can and answer their questions and, and create a little bit of value at each stage. So if he calls and says, how much are you? I might say, well, I want to send you a proposal or something in writing. Can I get your email address? And then can we get your phone number so in case we're disconnected? And then after that, I answer some questions for him and give him some value. Then maybe I'll come back and ask him, how'd you hear about us and how many people use your system? And, and we just might banter back and forth. But at the end of that call, my goal is to get key fields, I call these bucket fields, filled out. And we color code our database so that the bucket fields are in a different color and so that everybody knows when you're talking, we want to seek to fill out those bucket fields. And if they're filled out, then we can base follow-ups on them. We can base our reports on them. We can um, um, segregate our database appropriately. You know, we have a, a hot, warm, cold um, field in our database. And so, you know, hot is just subjective. And I also have a, a field called dross, or a, a value called dross. Dross is that crud that flows to the top when you try to purify a, a fine metal. And that's basically the client, the client that isn't a good fit for us. And so we'll categorize those and put those in, a, in our database. And again, the goal is about two minutes per call, but to be consistent on every single one with that information. Okay, so beyond that inside of ACT, here's what we have you put in. Um, we want folks to be consistent. So we, uh, after we fill out our contact information, here's some things in ACT that we do. Notes. Um, notes are not the right place for phone call conversations. We don't go there and go, you know, Susie called and we talked about this and this and this. We don't journal in notes in ACT. Notes are generally shorter. 
they provide for general communication with teams and general information about them. So for example, I might say that Mary works half a day on Thursdays. She went to Texas A&M and, and maybe um, you know she's been with the company 20 years. Um, that's a good example of a note. A history is a place to record business critical events. So for example, um, we called and, and, and or she called in, we, we spoke about this opportunity and I'm following up with her in six months. So activities are those follow-ups. These are recordings of, or, or these are where we record or schedule future events. And then when we clear them out and act, they go to histories. Um, now opportunities are our deals. And so if, if we're going to um, um, identify a deal, I, I generally have a follow-up process for contacts and a follow-up process for deals. And so a, a, a key customer may go a couple of years without an opportunity. So I still want to make sure and keep up with them, but I'll track those opportunities separately. So there's an opportunity area of ACT. And then I would suggest as, as you kind of get your, your own strategy going to think through, you know, what do we fill out? I don't, I don't want to overwhelm people with a bunch of data entry. So, but we also, and we also want to be consistent. So you might talk about, do we record all of our calls or just some of those calls? What types of calls do we record? What constitutes an opportunity? And, and as an example for that, I, I make an opportunity when um, I have a decision maker, a budget, and a timeline. So if I go to a trade show and, and somebody goes, I like ACT, and I go, well, I like ACT too, I don't make an opportunity out of that guy. I'll make an opportunity if, 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 if you're the one that makes the decision, you know when you want to do it, we can scope it out in some way. And then I make an opportunity and I follow up that way. Um, you might choose to, to record how long you, have, you take to follow up on a lead. We had an organization one time that was in the construction field, and they would go out and they would walk the property, they would talk about it, but then they'd come back and it'd take two months for them to fill out the quote. And, and they were losing deals because by the time they got back there, the guy's going, like, I forgot, I thought you forgot about me. And that's, that's pretty common in, in some fields where, you know, we just get busy, we don't crank out the quote. Now, if that's you, I have a tool called QuoteWorks that I work with that is awesome for that. So um, if you'd like to hear that, I can I'd do some other webinars on that. But um, we created a field in the database and we, we actually did a report that calculated the time to quote each lead. So the lead came in on this date, the, the site visit was this date, and the quote was recorded this date, and the salespeople were, were judged on or, or were accountable for um, meeting goals for time between the visit and the, and the quote being delivered. And so we saw those go from you know a month or two down to a few days, and it, it really tended to affect the bottom line. Um, how frequently do we follow up with existing clients? And you might have a different follow-up strategy um, based upon different client levels. You know, you might have your, your gold level clients that get a call once a month, your silvers that get a call once a quarter, and your bronze that get a call once a year. That's okay. Just define what makes them gold, silver, or bronze, and define how you want to follow up with them, and we can, we can do that in the system. Just being consistent. So remember, in terms of being consistent, if it's not an act, if it's not in CRM, it didn't happen. Be consistent in the way you ask questions or enter the data. Um, I typically like to review my entries, and so I have a, a group in ACT that brings up everything that's changed this week. And I'll go and I'll review that and make sure that I've entered the data consistently. So if my bucket, bucket fields haven't been filled out, um, I'd rather do it. I'd rather know about that now when the when the conversation is fresh in my head than you know, a week or two or three weeks later, and um, I forgot what we talked about. In fact, the times that I put something on a sticky note and it doesn't get into ACT, I, I lose those guys. I lose those guys because I didn't ask the right questions, I didn't put it in the CRM, and therefore when it comes time to follow up, their data is not where I follow up from, and that's when I lose folks. And so it's just, it's just a few simple processes done all the time yields big results. And so this is why for, for your organization, training is important. And so when you do that, that needs, you know, when, once we have our consistent data, data um, sorry, entry, now we can do reports. 
And so we can do reports by salesperson, we can do reports by customer, reports by product, all these different things, and dashboards. And um, It's a product, though, of asking great questions first, properly defining the database structure and consistent use. And from that, you, you'll, you'll yield just a huge wealth of information about your organization and about your sales process. And uh, man, the more folks you have working for you, the more critical this is. Um, so next thing is, is well, okay, how about a, a strategy, a CRM strategy within time? This little document on the right is actually a Google Doc. And I love that about this because here's what I do. We make a hopefully a one or two pager for each company um, when we're asked to that basically says, this is how we do things here. And so we make this Google Doc that says, Okay, here's how we, you know, set up act. Here's what the different parts of the, the screen mean. Um, here's what you do given each situation. So when you make a call, here's what you enter. When you see an opportunity, here's what an opportunity is. Here's how you define the opportunity, and here's how you record it. And the, the nice thing about a Google Doc is as you change it, everybody's got the most recent up-to-date one as soon as they click the link. And so we use that. We make a Google Doc. We embed videos. We write out our procedures for CRM. And then we train against that. And now when we're done, each employee has a one pager of here's how we do things. So you get a new person or a temp, we give them that one pager and it says here's how we do things. When you enter key information in the CRM, it's done consistently. It yields amazing insight and good reporting into your business. So why? I told you before, CRM is, if you do it right, you can increase revenue by 41% or more. I've got folks that have doubled their businesses. 43% of businesses that use CLM are failing to use even half the CRM correctly. 180% of, of respondents reported that usage is directly related to inadequate strategies. So, so what that means is y y we need to make sure that we have strategies defined and, um, and then build those into the database, then have in consistent use, and then finally report against it and adjust where necessary. All right, so sales opportunities, we use um, custom dashboards. We can do queries. Um, this, these are for tracking deals. A um, couple of different ways that people sell. So, so transactional sales, that means that the deal's closed in minutes or hours and, um, or shopping cart type of thing. That's good. Just put it in and, and you know, when they're ready to do it, you can do it. A lot of times after that, we can market to them. But the other thing that we can do with this is we also have longer term um, sales cycles. And so having a consistent strategy here can inspire loyalty, um, keeps it at the front of their brain, builds trust through relationships. The picture here is a, is a food truck company that I work with. And so these guys, we just had the rodeo in Houston, and they, they, these guys sell trucks that um, give people those deep fried Twinkies and stuff that they get. Well, the thing about the food truck is that the guys that use food trucks will keep those things sometimes for years and years beyond where they would like to. It's like, it's like your roof, okay? You can usually defer that decision a season or two. Well, if I'm putting all this in a notebook or all this in my head, I'm going to forget that two years ago this guy asked me about my roof or my sales, my food truck. And so um, we, we worked with these guys, and they basically um, – record this in ACT, but we also use a feature in, in, in QuoteWorks to um, know when they're looking at our quote. And so even though I quoted them two years ago, now it's you know end of the season and their food truck broke down again, they might go look at that quote again and, and we can see that they looked at it and therefore I can call them up and say, hey, I was thinking about you. And um, so just things that are important with, with longer term sales cycles, we want loyalty, we want to stay at the front of their brain. We might do this with adding value in terms of um, information and and, um, and tips and tricks or education, that kind of stuff. It's important to use that time to build trust in the relationship so that when it comes time to go, um, there's nobody they consider except for you because you've built so much trust. And so that increases the likelihood of closing that particular deal. And then ACT has some great tools for email marketing built into it for that. Um, so new versus recurring, you know, the, if this is the way your business works, um, we've got great ways that we customize ACT to, 
to reflect on that. So, you know, maybe it's the initial order followed by ongoing orders. And, and so if we're just tracking the big first deals but not tracking the ongoing, a lot of times you're missing a key um, portion of, of that. So um, what we do with this is we'll probably use fields or opportunities to track the initial order and then use um, recurring tasks or activity series beyond that to track the um, recurring orders. And that way we stay at the front of the brain and add some value for them. So price versus value. The other thing my friend in mortgage, he would, you know, mortgages are very competitive price-wise and a lot of the guys that are quoting rates have no idea if they can even make that rate. But the way that people decide a lot of times is they'll call this mortgage company and they'll go, well, how much are you? What's the rate today? And sometimes the guy that gets the business is the guy that makes up the lowest rate, even though he can't get it. And and so, you know, the problem with that is that that leads you into selling by price. And so here's what my friend says. He says, do you know there's about 10 different factors I need to know about you to give you the best possible price? And so now we can go and we can reach and talk about value. And and so, um, man, selling by price is tough because, you know, you're you're never there's no loyalty there. But if I can add value by helping them identify what's important to them, make sure that, that we know that we can add value to them in each of those areas, then we increase our likelihood of closing that. Um, we miss out on opportunities to add value in places we don't anticipate. We might end up solving the problem but or, or solving the wrong problem, which costs us the sale. So the times when I haven't asked the right questions or haven't talked to the right person, a lot of times I've lost the sale because um, they had a different criteria that I wasn't hadn't taken the time to find out. Um, when the customers detect that you've already decided what the solution is, without careful discovery, they feel manipulated and misunderstood. So it's important to understand what they're looking for, understand that need, and then communicate to them how your solution is going to to fit that. And so we do that with ACT a lot. I mean, ACT, ACT does some great things. It doesn't do everything, though. It's like I said, it's not a silver bullet or a magic pill. So it, it's important, I think, for us to educate on what it can do well, where you're going to have to be responsible, and things that just aren't going to do. It's not an accounting package. It's not an inventory control package. And so if, if, if you're expecting ACT to do that, man, I'd rather know that now so I can tell you how it's going to come out. So there's links to inventory control. There's links to accounting packages, but it's not the same thing. All right, I'm starting to wind up here. So I wanted to give you just a little survey real quick, if I could, if you find out how to do this. And polls. So just fill so I just, I just, what I'm curious on is how you're doing. Is this, is this, was this scratching where you're itching? Um, do you already have one? And then, and then you know, just kind of bump that out and we'll see how you're doing. Okay, great. Let me make sure I know how to show this to you. So there's our, oops. There you go. So that's, that's the results that we just saw. Folks seem to be doing okay, but anyway. Um, okay, so finally, the last thing, you know, this this is what we do a lot of, and if you'd like, um, if you came to our call today, I'm going to offer you a 30-minute phone call with me. Um, just You can call that number, talk to Brianna, and just tell her about this webinar, and she'll schedule you a 30-minute phone call. And specifically, we'll just talk about strategy and, and how you, your company is, is using a CRM or using ACT and how we can do better with that and you know, to give, give you some ideas and there's no charge, no obligation. Just um, give us a call and we'll try to help you with that. And then finally, this is me. And um, if you need to get a hold of me, that's my email address. And um, I actually have two websites. So I, I have acttrainer.com, which is, is specifically around ACT, and then we have Cloud Top Office, which is our, our company name. And um, we um, consult on ACT, train on ACT, we host a lot of ACT, 
And the hosting is actually great because we can manage the um, database for you. And if you need reports or something tweaked or have a problem, um, we take care of about 800 people, and we'd love to help you. So with that, I am done. If you'd like, I'm going to stop the recording.